Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, new episode of Audio Talks. For tonight I've renamed it in uh, Music Talks, mm, because maybe this evening we're going to talk about uh, something which is more related into music. But I mean, don't get discouraged, discouraged because some of the tips and tricks as it, uh, as it is, let's say, general marketing, can be applied in... Um, in your business, even if it's not music related. So, how have you been? How are you? I can see some of you is online, some of you, some of you is connected, some of you is not. So, how have you been? Uh, we also have Sleek, who my, who's an amazing producer and might he might be in, so let's say hi. So yes, tonight we'll stay another. We'll spend another hour together. I hope you'll uh, you will prefer this uh, YouTube format. Maybe it could be more accessible, uh, more accessible for you, as you don't have to download um, any other application. You don't have to create any other account. Nowadays, everyone has a, you, has a YouTube account, uh, even with your phone, you can scale down your quality, so not, not spending your, your bundles just to look at my face and hear my voice. So, we are approaching to Christmas. I don't know yet how the, uh, the schedule for the live show will, um, will change so i'm seeing people connecting you can even say hi in chat don't be don't be shy and don't forget to put a like in this video so here thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel yes uh, hi aman so have you spam uh, this live everywhere to your to your clock to your socials if I if I'm not wrong, you you skipped a couple of lives, but it's okay. You can find them. Uh, you can always find them uh, here. So uh, yeah, the topic uh, I mu I must admit that today's live, uh, today's title, it's a bit of a clickbait. First of all, tell me if you can hear, if you can listen to me like correctly. If uh, my voice sounds okay. Mm, because I have too many things on my on my desktop, so <laughs> if if the voice disappears or the music is too loud, etc., etc., it might be tricky for me to uh, to discover it. So yes, as I was saying, today's title it's a bit uh, of a clickbait title. Like, of course, I cannot tell you how to make millions with your music. Like nobody. Uh, as this recipe or I mean like there is a recipe but uh, you have to do a crazy marketing campaign and there are marketers for this I can tell you uh, what I usually say uh, what, what I usually tell to my clients to the artists I work with in how to promote their music what to prior prioritize uh, what to do, what to avoid, how to relocate their budget for uh, a small marketing campaign, given the fact that they have a budget. So, uh, because sometimes we really we are really struggling to work with artists that can barely afford our services. Uh, and I understand. I mean, music sometimes uh, is a hobby, a very expensive one. So, it's not so uncommon to find people that can't uh, afford, you know, your full rate. Uh, so, already telling them that they also have to pay a lot of money for a marketing campaign. It's, uh, you, you imagine it's tricky and discouraging. Of course, like in everything, if you want to get a return, like you have to... Uh, I mean, the return is proportionate to what you invest. If you invest a lot of money and your investment goes well, expect 
a lot of money coming back that, that's the <laughs> that's the general uh, you know uh, assumption that we that we make of course if you don't have uh, if you don't invest a lot in your marketing do not expect uh, like um, immediate and uh, stellar results like everything has to be um, let's say not planned but uh, it should go accordingly with what you decide to to allocate what's your budget what's your what's your um, yeah what's your basically basically what's your budget in in music at least for the marketing so why why this i have a lot of artists coming to me and telling me yeah please give me a recording deal uh, i have beats that are amazing i make lyrics that are amazing so i promise that together we'll be billionaire <laughs> or you know yeah i cannot afford the studio but we can uh, we can go royalty we can split the royalty so next question is how much is your how big is your fan base because if you're offering me royalties it means that you have people who can actually buy your music uh, my my fan base is like uh, 5000 people on facebook eh, it's not enough for a musician nowadays it's not enough you understand so how we can increase those numbers how we can increase actually the revenue of the music we produce both as sound engineers and uh, uh, and artists because i i strongly feel uh, and i feel that if as a sound engineer if as a producer i produce something which can give me uh, can let's say breaks the heat uh, of course my name is going with it so i'll be the guy who produce that i'll be the guy who work on it so it will be okay how can i say a collateral advertising for me as a sound engineer so this is one of the reasons why us as a sound engineer should also consider uh this thing this um this uh this side of the story yeah we know how to use uh, um we know how to use uh nini we, we know how to use an equalizer we know how to use a compressor but if nobody can hear our craft we are uh, doomed <laughs> that's that's the it's like we do not exist unfortunately so we need we need of course um, this is something that i give as a service to my to my client i offer a full package i also have a team that can work uh, with me regarding you know the marketing strategies and marketing um, related business for uh, whatever concerning a beat whatever is concerning uh, the release of an album the release on, of an ep etc etc mm. So yes, uh, I can start to tell you, I can start to introduce the situation, um, like the topic of this evening, by telling you what's going on nowadays. So what are the most common mistakes, why people uh, are not making it, we can say, uh, where people are failing in promoting themselves. Uh, I have a case history, like there was a friend of mine um, some times back, she, I guess she dropped a career of, uh, in music, but she was taking care, she was, uh, she was doing some, some nice music, um, which I mean, it could have had a chance but already when she came to me it's like oh i am broke <laughs> they always start with this story i am broke i can't really afford uh i paid a guy uh one hundred dollars hopefully one thousand 
$100 to make my beat, to record, mix and master. Now the guy disappeared and left me with a uh, crappy song. Well, 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 well. Uh, so you go there, it's like, okay, you want me to fix it? Yes. E give me something. Ah, no, I already spent 60. Um, sorry, I'm not talking Kenyan shilling. Let me talk in dollars. I already spent $600 in making my video clip. So the question already uh, it starts spontaneously. Are you an actor or you are or are you an you are a, a musician, an artist? Why I'm telling you this? <laughs> Because one of the first mistakes that we can see on the line is the drop and pray strategy. Let's call it uh, let's call it um, in that way. So people just uh, think they have a killer beat, they make a nice video, they put it on YouTube or on, on iTunes or uh, Soundbaby or on Revab or on this other platform and they hope that their song will break the hits. Now, if you adopt this strategy, which is more or less like shooting uh, in a crowd, as it was, you know, the old marketing was working that way. But nowadays, we can't afford it. Why? Really, whenever you are uploading your song, your craft, before you think is unique, before you think is astonishing and amazing and all the good things of this world think that whenever you upload it either on youtube on um, on um, itunes on spotify and uh, and all these kind of things <clears throat> remember that you are competing with with another 30 millions of songs available either for downloading or streaming or just you know purchase etc etc guys 30 million <laughs> it's a nation and not a small nation so you understand that by thinking that already you have to compete with a global market of 30 million of songs the chances of your song just being had as a mistake they are very 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 low so even if you make the more spectacular video even if your beat is a killer beat and only god knows how many songs have been released in history that did not made it because basically no one had them so you understand that the drop and pray strategy cannot work no matter what the producer say no matter what the videographer says no matter what your close family is says it's you in another 30 million of similar things. Mm, I mean, imagine big cities like uh, New York, LA, Paris, I don't know, Rome, maybe, uh, Berlin, all combined together, like 30 million, 30 million. So, uh, The drop and pray strategy can't work, simply. Because our, our little drops of music, it will be lost in an ocean <laughs> of, you know, similar things. Uh, I mean, if then if you don't want to, again, l let me put it, you know, in a nice way. Because me, I have a list, but I never expand it, no. 
So let me let me put it in a nice way. In a nice way. So surely if you upload it for free, no, that thing uh, it won't be it won't make money directly, no? I mean it's like if you are if you are living in the illusion that yeah I put my <laughs> Uh, song for free then people will buy it still no people will just uh, download it in some mysterious way and have it in their phone they they won't pay you a cent and again it's like thinking to get paid by this streaming platform unless you make big big numbers you understand it's not it's not a good a good thing uh, so this upload and pray is or shooting in the crowd, shooting in this virtual crowd. It's not a strategy that works, but despite this, and that's the funny fact, no? Is what 99% of indie musician, indie artist, or uh, trappers, let's say, they do it nowadays. They put their mixes somewhere on the net, they drop their link uh, somewhere else maybe in some whatsapp groups etc 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 99 percent of the case we we will not even try and open you know those li these links so but yeah the funny thing is like that people still doing it uh and i mean i also done it uh, in the past uh, my idea wasn't like even to make money straight with the streaming it was more or less to post uh, as a um, as a reel as a demo as a as something you know for people to, to to give a reference to people if you do it in that way it's okay you create you upload your song here on youtube or on other platform and then uh, you use it you include it you include that link in your cv you include that in a possible reference letter to showcase your craft. In that case is okay. I mean, you're just showing people what you're able to do. The same way, you know, videographers, they do with show reels. So you are already knowing that you want to make money out of that link or directly from that link, but at least it's uh, you are pre you start to build your presence online you know but again this it will be only a brick so and to build a wall with your name on it you need a lot of bricks no but we'll see them together we we, we partially explored them in one of, in one of the previous live um, which you can find again uh, on this channel uploaded from uh, from the other platform but yeah, don't think that you upload and you'll make money straight from the uploading. Another, another. Let's let's move forward. Otherwise, I spend one hour per point, which, oh, sorry, which I can't. So uh, another another strategy which I feel uh, is not viable nowadays but simply because first of all it's hard to to to, to discover you know to, to find the good and the bad people in the environment especially if you don't know how the industry work mm, i think would be like to sign a recording deal what does it mean like to sign a recording deal not knowing what you're doing actually in the modern industry when people sign a recording deal like if we think about beyonce or rihanna or uh, i don't know sia or um, calvin harris etc 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 they uh, it's like they sign a loan with the um, in, in a lot of quotes a loan with the um, the recording label the record label in which sense they say okay you recording label you are investing in me ten thousand dollars 
by providing the recording by providing uh, marketing by providing uh, transport etc 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 and we will apply ourselves to pay out this debt of ten thousand dollars and give you part of the investment etc etc by the royalties by the tickets by you know all these all these goodies of course uh, signing a recording deals it means that uh, the record label will own especially if you are starting you know it's like people don't want to invest their money on mr nobody mr mr miss and mrs nobody yeah uh so magically <laughs> if you don't know what you are signing uh, your song will magically become their songs so you will lose the intellectual rights uh, and the copyrights for these songs for a number of years in order to repay your the studio or if you don't meet uh, some sales targets still the record label will hand you a bill uh I mean, I want I won't deny to you that recording deals maybe maybe uh, I mean from actually from a person inside the industry. Maybe uh, amongst the, 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 the worst kind of contract you can find you can find on Planet Hat. But because they are loop side they I mean not loop side, they are made uh, at the advantages of the recording label but of course i mean they are investing money into you into your music and they want to be sure that they have them back they want to have the result so um there is for example um, in the modern age indira an indie rock band called 30 seconds to mars which a lot of us knows already mm. it was very popular in italy when i was around 16 18 18 years old uh, there was this uh, cultural current called emo emotional <laughs> and those guys were like the 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 main act of that kind of um, urban culture so there is this album that they made a beautiful lie that went platinum i mean it sold over a million of copies after that of course you can imagine the success they had in tv royalties the tour i mean the tour was like a killing tour you can imagine how may how much money the uh, the the recording label emi made out of it but after that after that the record label handed to the band a bill of two million dollars again after a successful platinum disc a successful tour tour the record label handed the band a bill of over two million dollars (laughs) <laughs> why how and why i mean it was completely legal as they um they signed a, rec- a standard recording deal so in this contract how can i put it it was clearly stated that all the album and the two are cost uh, had to be paid out of the band shares of tickets and not and album sales of course and not by the recording not from the recording company side uh so these guys <laughs> i won't say they work for free but i mean they had an immense pressure and they did not uh, really made 
all these millions. Of course, the recording company did. And don't think that mm, is not is not like uh, so uncommon. Even uh, was was Beyonce that it came to the news that she was the first woman to own the master of her recording. So I mean, you can imagine, no? Beyonce can put can create a recording label tomorrow. <laughs> and becoming billionaire uh, overnight but despite that she's still dependent on a recording label and she had to fight to own uh, what she created now mm, i understand a lot of these uh of these of these of these things but uh But yes, you understand that might be tricky at some point. So, especially as a start, if you go and uh, sign a recording deal, know exactly what you are signing. Because you might find yourself um, signing a long-term, a long-term loan. Now, is okay uh, if this is your plan but check the clauses always check the clauses on the other side on the other hand don't go to a sound engineer or to a producer and tell him look i want to produce for free uh, but i don't want to give you more than uh, 10% of the royalties doesn't work like that guys if i am if i'm producing you for free for free in quotes like for me is an investment is an investment in time of money is an investment in time of time is an investment in time of uh, network is an investment in time of a lot of things so i have to have my return and i guess it's normal uh, i'm not a bad person because i spent a lot in my education i spent a lot um, to network um, i spent a lot in buying you know this microphone or the computer i'm using currently so of course i want to make those money back and i want to make more of the money i spent it's an it was an investment otherwise i would have just bought a computer to play video games to watch movies end of the story so there should always be a win-to-win situation. Of course, you cannot give like 100% of what's yours, but in an investment, you always you also have to consider the whole thing. Like, who are you to propose to, to, to give me to propose me a recording deal? Mm, this is not how this is not how it works. Simply because music, guys, is an investment, like movies. Those are investment, and if I refuse to uh, produce you for free, it's not that I'm a, ba- a bad person. I mean, at least have the uh, decency to put together a small budget. Like even to tell me, I can't afford your full services. I can only pay you this. Can we discuss? Put something on the plate. The same way I cannot come to you and I can tell you ah, just because I feel I'm an awesome sound engineer I'm charging you 50,000 per bit. Of course I won't, I, I will be without client like in no time but uh, the same way another person <laughs> won't have a record, no? So, um, always, always, always be careful and of course on the other clauses, uh, like recording companies are very famous, at least in the mm, in the working in the in the field, to add unnecessary expensive. I mean, they don't care because at the end of the day, it's you who's paying. So, just be careful on what what uh, what you are making, what you are signing, in general talk to 
to speak numbers consider that a musician makes uh, maybe uh, 20 cent of a dollars out of every dollar 10 between 10 and 20 cent of a dollar uh, every dollar of their earning from music these on this on this 10 20 cent they also have to pay for taxes eh? <laughs> so um, then another thing another thing this this um now other side of the story terrible strategies thinking that sorry because i, I smell a, an interesting question Can one have payment in royalties for studio time? Every time we have a session, you increase my share by 0.5%, depending on how many sessions you'll need. Uh, of course, again, Haman, yes, you can. Like in a contract, uh, unless you are working with someone who's using standard contract, uh, you can have the kind of compensation you want. Like you can you can agree on the kind of compensa compensation you need. Uh, if you are very faithful uh, towards the human being <laughs> and saying okay you'll pay me in royalties, so for every session, like you'll increase my share of zero five percent, you can. Problem is, of course, zero five percent of one million dollars is something zero five percent of ten dollars is another thing so mm, i mean i still want to have zero five percent of a million dollar rather than have one hundred percent of ten dollars mm, that's that's the thing we'll always consider you know the the idea and also consider that having the royalties like like earning with royalties it also has a cost simply just by me calling the artist or the artist's manager to uh, follow up on the royalties that are not coming for example no all the time i take to verify and check all the reports so also put this that the royalties like if you plan if you're planning to one with royalties you are already having an extra cost to it simply because it takes uh, uh, it takes time to check on uh, on the behavior of uh, the person that has a credit toward you of course you can i can even i can even say you pay me in pizza or in chapati or uh, in chicken or uh, we can do like you know in dow you, you pay a dollar you pay me in cows it's um how can i say it's a contract that determines a transaction so you are giving me something to have something else in return which can be a good a service etc 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 uh, it really 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 depends of course you can i want I, I don't like I mean royalties is not something start to consider that the fact that royalties should not be something extra royalties should be something even as a sound engineer of course if you are an assistant sound engineer and you just sit there and press record and play even forget about considering royalties but in my personal opinion I think that royalties should be something that has to be included even if it's a one percent like in a lot of my standard contract with artists unless it's a specific case or unless i'm not sure one producing uh, or i'm not sure about the outcome uh, quality me i put one percent two percent in royalties why not because i think you'll make millions and i want 
hopefully yes, of course, but also to have that one percent of ownership on the project is enough to uh, make me attached to that pro pro project, not in terms of you know money, but in terms of uh, intellectual intellectual owning that that craft. Because do not forget that uh, considering the amount of work we put into a, a music uh, a musical craft uh, we should be considered co-owner and a lot of people do not do not do it especially especially in Kenya me I met people who made jingles for big companies uh, and they took $50 <laughs> not not knowing all these things now go and prove that whatever is on air is also your craft uh, so am i am i clear Haman? is it is it clear like nobody is forbidding you to do it but i won't advise you to be paid exclusively in royalties then it can be something uh to make to to make the artist responsible and to not make him or her feeling that you know they are doing it for free especially if they are paying like a ridiculously low recording fee so now um, another terrible strategy that i found uh, that a lot of artists are doing nowadays it often goes with the upload and pray uh, strategy, spray and pray. <laughs> it's assuming that uh, you assume that that social networks, social networks, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube itself, uh, uh, they will make you famous. No, no, no. I mean. Uh, I can tell you yes, but with a lot of buts. Why? Of course, if you upload your thing on YouTube and you put the link on uh, on your social network, uh, wow, that won't make you rich. That will not make you even famous. Unless you have you are having a following, which is mm, considerable. For example, if we can, um, I don't know if you remember what happened in, um, in the past. So five months ago, uh, no, even one year ago. Like the social light, uh, Vera Sidica post a song. It worth to her, it worth 1.5 million of views, but it didn't make her famous. She was already famous. She had she already had a following with another content. Uh, so for someone to put on youtube like if you go i'm, I'm looking at at her stats right now for a channel that has uh, 60 000, 60 000, uh, subscribers no because those are the numbers and an average like a lot of our videos do not even hit 100 000, no Mm. so she she posts a song 1.5 million she didn't became famous because of it or because a song was all over she was already famous so she used banally she used music as an additional content to uh to put it to put it there to put it online so posting your link on facebook or whatsapp groups want like like 
even if you have a strong social media presence it won't make you sell your music unless unless you have a contents so the music is a how can i say is a collateral no it's something that uh, uh, will coat your contents or i mean if you uh, if you are already an established band or an artist you can use facebook to uh, to showcase your content but for for the already existing fan fans so it's true that with the the digital era we can do a lot of things we can access a lot of services we can access a lot of people but the, the it's not automatic that since we access we sell so then we can do all the average that 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 uh, we can think in perspective okay but if we think in perspective too much uh, we lose the objectivity so of course numbers on social media will help you but remember you want to be um, an artist you don't want to be a social light So is it uh, is it clear this 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 step those things they all help they will all help you don't get me wrong of course if you want to sell your music the first thing you should do is to have it uh, online on uh, on an online store of course you should tell people look there is this new product out go and buy Of course you need to uh, showcase maybe with a Facebook page rather than a website. Eh? I mean a lot of people nowadays are not using websites anymore. I don't know why and uh, it's so cheap to make one. It's so it's so inexpensive nowadays to buy a domain to have uh, professional professional in quotes like emails but i mean i feel it's still necessary just to build that aura of professionalism around you and uh, and it's important since those things are accessible and now the the, the, the market now the mass is normalizing towards using this media why if you believe like then if you are telling me that you don't have 100 dollars to create your website uh, uh, then 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 we are having a problem because it means that uh, i don't know what do you want to do with your music mm, if you don't have you know the money if you don't have the resources the will even to to sponsor it to market it uh, so let's use all this method but not assume that just by the virtue of this thing existing you will be famous um, a thing that you can use like nowadays in this uh, in this era and age to actually encourage people you know to buy something after you are having everything in place okay after you establish your identity musical and not musical this is general is a general thing not not uh, mm, on music only but is a general thing So something you can do is to create a newsletter. Like to have a direct and intimate contact with 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 your uh, potential buyers. And it's not like that you send an email, boom, you made a sale. Like you have to send a lot of emails, you have to be constant, no? In order to sell your music. So of course you can't 
sei send an email by my music you have to study how to create a newsletter you also have to offer some other some other collaterals i think some other services some other thing for example in my case my blog is a good excuse to send emails to tell you oh uh, i've done i've done this new article go and have a read it in the article i tell you this is the basic if you want more go and study on skillshare go and uh, organize a private class with me Mm, or if you're an artist this is why you should record with me because pa, 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 pa. and then in the email ah by the way we can work together by the way as a reminder you can study with me but those things are, are, are by the ways i mean always be interesting i i will i will even feel shy uh i mean to send this uh, shameless email just telling you to buy stuff like be make a difference even if you want just to tell jokes no like give something to people give something that they can actually benefit from so uh, imagine that you have to emerge as an artist you already have competition which is which has a size of an ocean remember 30 million songs that are ready there out ready to be uh, broadcast streamed played and bought so you already have this 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 competition out there so make a difference uh, and be sure that again uh, your product uh, it has a meaning for a given market i can't go in the north pole and start to selling freezers like <laughs> really it will be like 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 useless no somehow or i cannot go to the sahara desert and selling winter outfit i mean there i could because at night in the desert etc 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 but you understand no my point Mm. so as a comparison uh, compared to the social media the email since you're having social media is passive no you put your link there you put your song your video and you're hoping that people will click on it with an email is a more of a is more of a proactive uh, no mm. conversation is you proposing now uh this is how you can tell people to buy your product then you have to create a product you have to create an album you have to create an ep and be sure that the product you are creating it reflects your idea is part of your identity is somehow coherent and consistent with uh, with yourself with your ads don't think ah i am making i'm recording this song for free the way we were thinking before then i can sell it even if i sell it at uh, one dollar it will be <laughs> all uh, you know all earning no like invest in your, in, your, in your music go to a real studio if you have to go like like pay real mastering nowadays mastering is of course it uh, the, the quality somehow is kind of lower to me i still have people that telling me ah, i'm perfecting the mastering what are you using fruity loops so they are me already i already i'm already praying for for the extinction of the human being no uh, that's the thing so it's like Eh, no but you see this producer me cannot afford more than ten uh, thousand eh, sorry one thousand one hundred dollars per song because other producer works at this rate go and work with other producer i mean then don't come to me and tell me ah this guy made a crappy craft can you fix it yes you pay me and you pay me the, the full amount no discount this time 
not because I want to punish you, but because you don't you didn't have faith in my words. So the more you save, the more you're going to uh to spend later on. It's always like this. Don't there are no miracles in this field. There is a lot of hard works, there is investment. Of course, if, for example, I'm organizing, I am someone who wants to buy your music, you know, and I listen to your demo. If your demo is uh, sounding pristine and nice and clear and professional, when I listen to it, uh, of course I won't mind to spend uh, $5 in your music, no, it's like, ah, he invested in himself, so let me invest in his craft. Let me have, uh, let me, let me go home with the idea that I spent to get something professional. Something that has a reason to exist. Of course, if you are not serious with your music, and this I'm, I'm telling it even against my interest, guys. Like your best masterpiece is not to do music. Like if you think that making music is just putting a kick in four on Fruity Loops. Uh, and you are done. You are not making music. You are just... Adding noise to, to the other 30 millions of songs already uploaded and ready to be, to be broadcast and bought. So, always carefully evaluate your, step in the, your steps in the field. Uh, and this I'm telling it, uh, maybe, maybe with a bit of bitterness, yes, but... I mean... The, if if this these things does not you know somehow evolve or gets better, it will be hard for people that really has some, that, that really have something to say. Because nowadays, uh, even if I receive a link uh, on WhatsApp, go and check this this YouTube song for me, put a like, etc. 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 Me, the first thing I will think is like, ah, is the usual, <laughs> is the same song over and over and over. I don't have time for it. Maybe in a couple of times, in a couple of occasions, I've lost the uh, chance to work with good people, to work on good music. So, Always, always, always be careful. So, create a product which deserves to be called a product. And then, also another method, guys, you are musicians, you are artists, make arts, perform, go out, have gigs. That's the one of the fast income, you know, that an artist uh, uh, he should have. I remember one time I was thinking, I was talking with a guy, I'm, me, I'm more of a performing artist rather than a recording artist. Yes, but it's so silly to even make the distinction. An artist should be both, in my opinion. Like if you, unless you are a, a, a session musician, so you're just called and told exactly what to do. An artist should both record and perform if he wants or she wants to make money the real money in music they are in gigs mm, nowadays albums and EPs and things like those are uh, what can we say uh, things that create but if you are already an established artist they create buzz on your next concert like imagine beyonce she doesn't make a lot of money by you buying her music the money she makes are in the in the live gigs are when her song is used elsewhere uh, when a song is maybe played on the radio etc 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 when you know to create buzz around her live gigs are the one that they pay uh, the more the, 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 the highest paying activity that a musician 
can and should do. So, of course, if you are an autotune musician <laughs> or an autotune artist, you understand that uh, you do not have a long life, a long shelf life. If I go to your gig and you sing like that, like a goblin, no, do, 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 do. Eh. You understand that how can you make money if you don't entertain people or also those other artists that are very radical and uh, rebel no i don't want to entertain people my gigs are very intimate they are no i mean it's like people uh, as much as they can relate to your singing it's like you're not making music for the masses which is okay it's another market but do not expect to make billions out of it unless you have the luck to uh, meet the right people that can sell this kind of product to the right market and optimize on the sales but again it's sales if you want to make money uh, sales that's the the key word no so, again, how can I make <laughs> this the clickbait of the title? By the way, start to think about some question because uh, Megan took for another three hours, guys, but <laughs> it's already been one hour of live show. So, start to think about question and we close uh, the, the live. So, what I'm telling you, that 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 the click the the, the click bait uh, let's say uh, factor in this title is how can i make music with my like, how can i make money with my music simply entertain people go and play live shows the rest okay so the rest are things that are helping that helps you uh, uh, that help you being afloat uh, being on the surface of course to go and propose your performance to a venue you need to have mm, a craft of your music no i do this kind of music uh, this is the genre the, those are the lyrics boom product then if you already have a social media presence no so the first brick is that social media presence it's like look i also have a fan base of uh, 10,000 people so hopefully out of these 10,000 people maybe 100 people can come and pay a, and pay a ticket to watch me live so another brick in the wall and then boom it's like ah, and this is my website where you can find uh, me talking about uh, i don't know uh, things and those are my contacts no? So, professionalism. So you build an identity, which is not like, ah, oh, boss, can I come and perform at your gig, at your venue, sorry. It, uh, of course, it's like, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. So, the key in making money with music is to perform, is to have live gigs end of the story then on the collateral i mean you can make money by creating music for the product think about those people who make soundtracks but generally a soundtrack is not for uh, like yes you can make a beat you can make an instrumental but really without a voice unless uh, if you watch some movies like i remember mm, the first album uh, what was the name of it the very first album that i bought uh, was um, the album for celine dion uh, what was that name the, the name of the album the one for titanic no the one that contained the 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 the, the song for titanic as the discography of this uh, of this artist uh, hmm? or maybe it was 
a collection ah, non del tournée uh, yeah i think it was at this point i think it was like a collection of all the all our uh, All our songs, all our previous songs. But it was around the time for Titanic and uh, and things like that. Mm. So yes, I mean, except why why I'm why I'm telling you this because like in that case with the song uh, for titanic she really she really i i would say at least in italy she became famous before i mean yes there was something before but that made it how can i say relatable to the to the to the to the new generation of that time But I mean, usually you do not, uh, you do not, uh, you do not have, you do not have short movies or movies or documentaries where you sing. So it's a, it's a different segment of the market. Though you can explore it. I mean, it's there. Uh, you can. Uh, you can try and explore it it gives you revenue if you know what you are saying and uh, and what you are creating again don't expect to become billionaire overnight because again also that's that's also a, an ocean but again if you want to make money with music consider music as entertainment So start to entertain people. Start to play live gigs. Start to build your fan base from it. And then uh, you'll see, I'm, I'm sure that in a few years, you'll see uh, the benefit of it. So, of course, of course, uh, this is, those are um, personal opinion, is what... I would do if I would have been a musician. Uh, then yes, you can do, you can say, mm, but I can sell merchandise, uh, I can license uh, my music, uh, uh, I can even teach music, but this with my music, with my composition. So, uh, the topic is big we condensate you know my personal thought what i would do if i were to perform music uh, uh, to create music to create my 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 personal crafts so uh i think that uh, if you do not have any other question Also, for tonight, it's everything. Let me give you one extra minute in case you need it. Let me also see if I... Sp oh, I have to change the position of this microphone, otherwise it will give you jump scares. I could start an ASMR channel. So, as I don't see uh, any other question coming in, if you like this live podcast, please put a thumb up it will be of, uh, of great support for for me and for this channel 
you can also support me by enrolling my Skillshare class, the link, links are, are in the description. You can interact with, with me through my website, through my, through my socials, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and then yes, those are the ones that I use the most. So, again, if you like this live, please share, comment, uh, like and love. If you didn't like, do whatever you want. See you next Sunday and uh, in the meantime, let's rock! <laughs>